But name, image, and likeness is something that's here. And I think the more supporters that we have for the University of Alabama in all sports right, that are willing to sponsor players, whatever you want to call it, use them in your business to help your business, that's going to help our programs. Um, the thing that I fear is at some point in time, they're just going to say we're going to have to pay players. If we start paying players, we're going to have to eliminate sports. All right? And this is, this is all bad for college sports. I mean, we probably have, what, 450 people on scholarship at Alabama, whether they're women's tennis players, women's softball players, golfers, you know, baseball players, non-revenue sports that, should, that have for years and years and years been able to create a better life for themselves because they've been able to get scholarships and participate in college athletics. That's what college athletics is supposed to be. It's not supposed to be something where people come and make money. And you make a decision about where you go to school based on how much money you're going to make. You should make a decision based on where you have the best chance to develop as a person, as a student, and as a player, which is what we've always tried to major in. And we're going to continue to do that. And hopefully there's enough people out there that are want to do it but I know the consequence is going to be difficult for the people who are spending tons of money to get players. And you've read about them. You know who they are. I mean, we were second in recruiting last year. A&M was first. A&M bought every player on their team, made a deal for name, image, and likeness. All right, we didn't buy one player. All right, but I don't know if we're going to be able to sustain that in the future because more and more people are doing it. Yeah. So it's... Uh, it's tough, and people blame the NCAA. But in defense of the NCAA, we are where we are right, because of the litigation that the NCAA gets, like the transfer portal. Every time somebody wanted to transfer, they'd apply for a waiver. Right? If you didn't give them, if the NCAA didn't give them a waiver so they could be immediately eligible, they filed suit. So the NCAA would back off and give them a waiver. So they just said, we're just going to make a rule where everybody can transfer. That's how that happened. So if the NCAA doesn't get some protection from litigation, whether we got to get an antitrust or whatever it is, from a federal government standpoint, this is not going to change because they cannot enforce their rules, just like Nate said. We have a rule right now that says you cannot use name, image, and likeness to entice a player to come to your school. Hell, read about it in the paper. I mean, Jackson State paid a guy a million dollars last year that was a really good Division I player to come to school. It was in the paper, and they bragged about it. Nobody did anything about it. I mean, these guys at Miami that are going to play basketball there for $400,000, it's in the newspaper. The guy tells you how he's doing it. So, um, but the NCAA can't enforce their rules because it's not against the law. And that's an issue. That's a problem. And, and unless we get something that protects them from litigation, I don't know what we're going to do about it.